I was looking for a better CPU cooling solution for my Dell XPS 8940 when I came across this post from user SumCaliGuy on the Dell forums. He recommended using the Vetro V5 as a drop-in solution. Dell uses a proprietary mounting system for the cooling device, and the Vetro is apparently compatible with it. Let me share with you how I installed it, as well as my results. This is the Vetro V5 CPU cooler that I'll be installing in a Dell XPS 8940. It's actually going for about $25 to $30 right now on Newegg and Amazon. First, I run some tests with the stock Dell cooling solution. I'm setting Turbo Boost to 96 watts. And when we run a stress test at the 96 watts, we get an average of 81 degrees C. When running benchmarks, we encounter thermal throttling. The CPU is reaching 100 degrees C and then starts to back off. Now here are the same test results, but with the Vetro V5 installed, when we run the same test at 96 watts, we're getting a temperature of 54 degrees C. When we run benchmarks, the CPU is no longer thermally throttled. I wanted to push it a little more, so I put the power level up to 150 and ran a benchmark. It didn't thermally throttle and the score jumped by quite a bit. The results are very promising. We see a decrease of 27 degrees Celsius with the Vetro V5. That's more than a 30% increase in cooling ability. Here's a quick unboxing of the Vetro V5. It comes nicely packaged and includes a heatsink, a 120 millimeter fan, and various mounting hardware. It also includes thermal paste that has enough in the tube for at least two applications. The heatsink is large and seems to be built very well. The fan is RGB and also seems to be good quality. This is the stock Dell CPU cooler. It's nice and compact, but a little low on cooling performance. To remove it, first unplug the fan header from the motherboard. Next, use a Phillips head screwdriver to loosen up and remove the four mounting screws holding the CPU in place. You can then just lift it up by hand. I wanted to make sure there was enough room in the case for the heatsink, so I put it in place and put the lid over it. It barely fits in there with maybe a millimeter or two of clearance. Now adjust the mounting bracket screw positions. There's a slot in the bracket and you just have to slide the screw in either direction until the screws line up with the mounting holes. Do this for both brackets and it'll make installation a lot easier. Next we attach the adjusted mounting brackets to the heatsink. Use the four small screws provided in the kit. Don't over tighten these screws as it can strip the material. Just make sure that they're snug and secure. Now is a good time to do a final fit test to make sure that the four screws line up with the holes on the motherboard. Make adjustments as necessary. We're now ready to clean up the old thermal paste. Use a high percent rubbing alcohol and make the surface shine. We need to remove the sticker from the heatsink. The surface is very well manufactured with a polished finish. Use alcohol to clean it up even more if you want to. With our surfaces prepped, it's time to put down some thermal paste. A pea-sized blob in the middle of the CPU should be all that you need. There's enough paste for two applications in the supply tube. We can finally install the heatsink. Carefully place it directly over the CPU and line up the mounting screws with the motherboard. Use a screwdriver to tighten the four screws in a crisscross pattern. Just tighten them a little each time until you feel them bottom out on the motherboard mounts. Next, we have to install the fan to the heatsink. The fan has arrows pointing in the direction of airflow. Be sure to install it the way you want the air to be blowing. Simply position the fan where you want it to be on the heatsink and use the supplied spring clips to clamp it down. Then do the same for the other side. You don't need to remove the heatsink from the computer to do this. It's just easier for me to demo it this way. Once installed, it holds together very well. Removal is easy too. Just pop off the clips and the fan can be removed. Now we have to install the fan for real. Start by plugging the fan's 4-pin connector into the motherboard. The Dell XPS does not have an RGB header, so I won't be plugging those leads into anything. With the wires connected, it's time to mount the fan to the heatsink with the spring clips. Start with the more difficult side to reach and finish with the easier one. After it's secure, do a little bit of cable management to keep loose wires from dangling around, and you're ready to put the side cover back on and power up. Overall, this is a very easy part to add to your machine, and it does a great job of dropping the temps.